I've been helping all of you with your hiatal hernia for several years now. Well, I have some new information that might help you the same way it helped me. Stay tuned. Coach Zach here, and today, this is the third installment of our hiatal hernia series. Now, the first two videos that we posted talking about hiatal hernia and how I healed it myself did so well. The comments, I mean, people saying that it helped them, doctors saying they'd use it with their patients, and I've gotten so many questions. Uh, a lot of the questions are actually the same. So this third video is going to attempt to answer some of the many questions that I've got, as well as present to you some new information that I've learned when it comes to the hiatal hernia. Now the hiatal hernia is actually a much more serious problem than we think. The reason why is that it is underdiagnosed. What that means is people have the hiatal hernia and they don't know they have it. Now the reason why a hiatal hernia is so destructive, so insidious, is because of the vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve has connections to your heart, lungs, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, your genitals. I mean, so many different parts of your body have direct connections to your vagus nerve. Okay, what does that have to do with a hiatal hernia? Your vagus nerve goes directly through the structure, the hiatus, that causes problems with a hiatal hernia, right? If you haven't seen the other videos, we talked extensively about what a hiatal hernia is. Basically, your stomach being displaced up into the diaphragm, maybe even pushing up into your chest. This can pinch off your vagus nerve, causing all types of problems with the organs that I mentioned on top of so many different areas, your endocrine system, it can totally destroy your digestion and over time this can cause problems like demineralizing your bones to get the essential nutrients for you just to live. So hiatal hernia is underdiagnosed and is so destructive in people's lives. You might have symptoms and your doctor might have no idea what it is. Could be hiatal hernia. And it doesn't take much, right? Your stomach just needs to be a little bit out of place, putting pressure up into your diaphragm, creating a lot of the problems that we've already talked about. So let's talk about some of the questions that I've gotten from so many people, and hopefully this will answer some of those questions. First question, people asking, can I do push-ups? Can I do deadlifts? Can I do my types of exercises with a hiatal hernia? People saying they do their exercises and it causes the symptoms to return or get worse. Well, when it comes to exercise with a hiatal hernia, listen, there are certain things you need to do before going right into the exercise. My philosophy, which is becoming more and more refined as I learn more and I become more in tune with myself, is first step to treating a hiatal hernia is to relax all the surrounding muscles. Relax the abdominals, relax the internal organs, relax the muscles around your ribs, your obliques, relax the muscles around your spine, specifically your thoracic spine, right? We wanna relax everything as much as possible. We can do this by using the magnesium oil that I talked about in the last video. We can do this with self-massage as well as body work, right? Traditional massage therapy can help relax all of these structures. Once all of that is relaxed, we wanna traction the stomach down, right? We wanna bring the stomach back into its rightful place. We can do that with you know, the trampoline techniques, with the heel drops, we do that with the self-massage, getting an experienced body worker to do it for you. Once the stomach is in its right place, we want to keep it there. So we want to strengthen the diaphragm, strengthen the transverse abdominis, strengthen the deep muscles of the core, keeping the stomach there. And then we want to install the right habits, the right eating habits. We want to avoid certain foods that I've talked about in the other video. So once we do all of that, then we can resume exercise. Because a lot of people are saying, yo, Zach, 
I see you doing all these crazy exercises on this channel, doing all this core work, doing this heavy lifting. What's that all about? Like, how is your hiatal hernia? Well, I make sure that I've done all the things that I've just mentioned, relaxing the, re the surrounding structures, making sure my stomach's in the right place, having the right breathing patterns. That's key. If you want to exercise and you have a hiatal hernia and you don't want to aggravate it, you have to breathe correctly, right? So a lot of times if you're lifting heavy weights, right, with squats or with deadlifts, you're using the Valsalva maneuver to create that intra-abdominal pressure. That's okay if everything is functioning correctly, if your diaphragm is working in the right way, if your stomach's in the right place, but if it's not, and you go to do that Valsalva maneuver, that, that brace, you're just gonna cause all types of problems, right? The diaphragm is in spasm, it's not functioning correctly, and then you're creating all this pressure, you're gonna create the hiatal hernia to return, those symptoms are gonna get worse. So. Don't do the Valsalva maneuver until you're positive that your hiatal hernia is feeling much better and you haven't had symptoms for a while. Until then, you wanna do what's called the power breath. I have videos on this channel explaining what that is. Basically, you're not holding the breath as you exercise. You inhale through the nose, and then on the, the difficult part of the exercise, you exhale through the teeth. So, that's gonna create intra-abdominal pressure, but not so much that you're gonna create the hiatal hernia symptoms to return. So proper breathing patterns while you're lifting. Also, we wanna keep the spine healthy. We wanna bring mobility to the spine, right? Doing certain mobility drills. You can do the basic cat-cow, spinal waves. I have videos discussing the spine in great detail on this channel, check those out. But we wanna make sure the spine is moving right. Because a lot of times, I mean in my case specifically, my hiatal hernia was caused by a specific injury that also caused a couple of my discs in my thoracic spines to bulge. Now I've already healed those since then because disc bulges can be healed naturally without surgery, just like a hiatal hernia can. Uh, but you wanna make sure your spine is healthy. Thoracic extension, you really want to create this thoracic extension, right? Uh, laying over pillows, laying over a yoga wheel, doing certain things that helps bring this openness back to your body. Uh, a lot of times when people are exercising their core, they wanna get a six pack, they're doing a lot of crunches, right? They're doing a lot of sit-ups. They're doing exercises that engage the upper abdominals. Now the abs are very unique in the fact that they are actually segmentally intervated. That's just a fancy word for saying that different nerves connect to different parts, right? So a nerve connects to the upper abdominals and then a different nerve to the lower abdominals, which means they can fire in isolation, right? So if you're just doing crunches, if you're just doing sit-ups, you're gonna be engaging the upper abdominals, creating them too tight, which can interfere with your diaphragm's ability to breathe, create this kyphotic posture, which is just gonna make your hiatal hernia so much worse. So if you're trying to do core work, make sure you're doing the lower abdominals, make sure you're doing leg lifts in the right way where you're not engaging your psoas muscle. Make sure you're doing, I have a videos actually explaining some of my favorite ab exercises, check that out. But you wanna be exercising your core in the right way. Transverse abdominis, that deep core muscle, that vacuum muscle, exercise that. We need to do all this work to ensure that the body is prepped before you go right into your heavy lifting, right? This has to happen. Muscles have to be relaxed. Stomach has to be in the right place. All the supporting structures have to be strong to hold the stomach there or else you're gonna keep dealing with the same problems. Another common question I get is asking me questions about my specific hiatal hernia. People asking questions like, Yo, Zach, do you have to keep doing these exercises? Do you have to keep self-care or does it keep coming back? Like, will a hiatal hernia actually ever heal? And the answer to that is you have to do the work, right? Listen, it always comes back. If I'm not careful, if I'm not doing the right habits, if I'm eating in a hurry, or if I'm not eating in the right way, if I'm not being mindful, if I'm not chewing my food right, it can get stuck, right? So 
I have to always make sure that my stomach is in the right place. At this point, I'm very in tune with it. Because the tear that caused the stomach to come up, you know, the, the body has a capacity to heal, but it can always refacilitate that injury. Now, I don't really deal with it as much anymore, really at all. I avoid the certain foods like raw tomatoes and very acidic foods that cause these problems. I don't heavy deadlift anymore. I do other types of exercise that don't create so much compression on my spine, which will bring back the symptoms. So because of trial and error, because I've become a scientist in my own life, dealing with this hiatal hernia, I don't really have to deal with those problems and those symptoms anymore. For you, it's the same thing, right? You have to become an explorer of your own body. What works, what doesn't. What I can tell you does work is avoiding certain things, right? Heavy, heavy deadlifting. Listen, that's too much compression on the spine. Do other types of functional exercise. Proper breathing, avoiding the wrong foods, right? Engaging and training your core in a functional way to keep everything safe and strong. All of these are foundations to be able to live a life without hiatal hernia symptoms. Listen, this series can be an ongoing thing. Keep dropping those questions. If I get enough questions that are the same, we can make a part four of this hiatal hernia series. But if you haven't seen the last two videos, go ahead and check those out. I have specific exercises, specific techniques that can help you heal your own hiatal hernia. And one last thought, there's a lot of doctors that might say, you know, you can't uh, heal a hiatal hernia. This is uh, hodgepodge, woo-woo stuff, right? The doctors say that they're trained in their way and that's the only way. Listen, doctors are not usually concerned with the structure of the body. They're not anatomists. Doctors are more physiologists. They're worried about the chemical interactions of the body. They're worried about the function. Right? So if you go to a doctor, traditional doctor, with a hiatal hernia, the way they're trained is to give you medication to help cut down your symptoms. They'll give you medicine to cut down the stomach acid, right? They'll do other things to cut down your symptoms because they're looking at it at more of a cellular, a physiological level, looking at it from breaking it down and seeing what they can do with drug intervention. I'm looking at it from more a structural, and anatomical perspective. Stomach is displaced, it's pushed up. Let's bring it back down on a structural level. Let's strengthen the structures to keep it there. Just a different perspective. Not saying one's more right than the other. It's just that, you know, a lot of uh, medical doctors are stuck in their dogmatic ways, thinking their system's the only right way. Doesn't always work that way. Another common question I get is, Zach, how long did it take for you to reduce your symptoms and heal your hiatal hernia. Well, in my specific case, it didn't actually take that long. It took maybe a couple months. You know, I'm not, I wasn't really keeping track at the time, but that picture of me with the visual representation of a hiatal hernia is actually not common. Most people with hiatal hernias, you won't be able to see it. There's not that much of a visual representation of a hiatal hernia. In my case, it was a traumatic injury and all that visual representation was inflammation, which went down relatively quick once my stomach came back down into place. It didn't take me that long, but again, everyone is different. Everyone's hiatal hernia is different. There's different types of hiatal hernia. You can have a sliding hiatal hernia where the stomach is actually pushing through into the chest. You can have a paraesophageal hiatal hernia where the stomach's not pushing through, it's just pushing up into the diaphragm, still causing a host of problems. So it just depends on your individual factors, right? It depends on your anatomy, your structure, it depends on your lifestyle, your exercise, your eating habits. It's so individualized, but what I can promise you is that by doing these principles, relaxing the surrounding structures, tractioning the stomach down in a gentle way, strengthening those structures, you will have eventually, however long it takes, benefits and you will reduce your symptoms, potentially completely reducing your symptoms, although no promises, no guarantees, I don't know it all, but try these exercises, these techniques in the other videos that I shared and most likely they will help you out. 
So to recap, my philosophy hiatal hernia, step one, relax all the surrounding structures, bring mobility and health to the spine. Step two, traction the stomach down, bring it back to its rightful place. Step three, strengthen all the surrounding structures to keep the stomach there. Step four, install the right eating and lifestyle changes to keep those symptoms from returning. So as always, I'm Coach Zach. Like the video, subscribe, drop down any more questions. Might make some more videos regarding this hiatal hernia. I don't know, we'll see. And I'll see you next time. Yeah.